a walkthrough on this lab and we will do it. Cool. Okay, so what are we doing here? Four figure counter. Nice. Good morning, Edward. Uh, we are going over um, some CSS this morning. We're going to do the graffiti lab um, for something interesting. Cool. Okay. So the fork it, clone it, open index, HTML. Cool. Let's do that. Where on earth did my folder go? Um, Cool. All right, we got some graffiti. Uh, awesome. So, all my craziness. Um, cool. Okay, so inspect the elements in the graffiti wall, and then we're gonna write some selectors to clean things up. Um, oh, sorry, dogs are apparently crazy this morning. Um, oh, cool. Okay. Um, Don't use CSS in part. Um, cool. Okay. We can totally do this. So um, the way that I tend to think about um, CSS selectors, uh, no worries. Um, so the way to that I generally think about CSS selectors, Harvey, is um, that you want to use the least specific selector possible. Um, so hopefully this won't be too, too bad in terms of um, uh, in terms of writing a super specific one. So the one that they're starting us off with is tag one. Um, so let's see what that one takes away because it gave us this here. Um, so, just cool. Okay. So it looks like we just have these ones. Okay. So with tag two, so when I'm looking at the tags, the key thing for me is here, um, this selector here. So this is the one that we want to be more specific than. So that's what we have right now um, in terms of our selector. So if we copy that and do okay, cool. Okay, so we want to, everything that we're going to do is display none. So we can just kind of um, keep that there. But for a more specific selector here, so we have the wall and the tag, um, the tag dash to here. So we can do, um, so in this one to get more specific, um, you can just go up a level. So we've already got our div ID of wall, which we use for the first one. Um, so for this one, I'm gonna just add the body tag um, at the beginning of the selector because that's gonna make it more specific and that should override our, um, that should override our uh, display block property here. So if we refresh it, we should see, cool. So here you can see over on this side um, that it's overriding this display block with our display none that we have there. Um, cool, so for our third tag, um, so this one has selectors here. So we actually could 
do the same thing, but that's a little cheating um, in terms of, uh, I think, what the point of the lab is. Um, there's actually two different ways that we can go. So we could do the same thing here where um, we could add the body tag. And that'll give us, um, it will actually hide that third um, div for us. But what's really interesting about this one is if we notice over here on the selectors, we actually have two classes that exist with this tag three. So instead of adding that body tag, which is a bit of a bigger selector, I'm actually going to chain this wicked tag on the end of it. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna do this, so dot wicked. So that's actually gonna give us the same effect here. So it actually is more specific because this one in the original selector, it just used the dot slick. It didn't chain both of the, um, both of the classes together. Um, right. Cool, does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two different ways that we could go there, right? Um, so because this has two classes and the first selector only used the first one, it means that I can use both classes and it becomes a more specific selector for, um, for that particular element. Okay. That's, that's so here, yeah. So here it's just got one, but here it's got both. So it's a little bit, it's more specific in terms of the way that CSS calculates specificity. Okay. I understand that. Cool. Awesome. All right. That's our first round. Let's see what our next round has. Um, cool. So we've got a parent div here. So I'm assuming that this one is yeah cool so here in the next one we've got wall and tag four but what they've added in um um so what they've added in here is a parent div so for this one, what I'm going to do is in the middle in between, so we've got our wall tag, um, which is our main div that wraps around everything. Um, but here on this one, we've got a parent div. So in between our wall tag and the tag four, I'm going to do this. It's a class. So dot for class. So I'm going to do this. Um, because when you're writing your CSS selectors, they always have to go in the order that they are. So here we've got our wall and then we've got our parent div and then we have our tag for div. So we want our selectors to go in order. Um, so if we refresh, did I save that? Yeah, okay. So if we refresh the, we should see, cool. So that one hit that one. So over here we can see that this one becomes more specific than this one over here. Um, nice, okay. So on tag five here, um, it looks like they did the same thing. So we'll grab that one and come over here. Cool. Okay, so let's see. Um, so this one we've got, so it looks like they're using um, uh, we've got a div of wall, we've got our parent div, and we've got tag five and slick. So on our element, we have both an ID and a class, and so they've chained those together. Um, we can add body to this, but I want to see, I want to try and see if I add a div to the beginning of that dot parent class, if that makes it more specific or not. Um, so, because you can call things in different ways, right? We can call them with just an ID, or we can call them with both the element and the ID. So, let's see. It should, yeah. So that made it more specific. 
that way. So um, you can, if you call it with both the element and the class, that will make it more specific than just calling it with the class itself. Uh, cool. Okay. So there's that one. And then that one does not appear to have anything in it. Oh, cool. Okay. So there's our tag six. Oh, that's why. Okay. Okay. So we've got our div wall, div parent, and then our last child and the tag six. Um, okay. So last child and tag six. That's interesting. Um, so we've got parents, so we've got the wall. So we have our wall. Here's another trick that I really like. So one of the things that we can, um, um, that is built in in um, the developer tools here is um, a copy. So you can do lots of different things. So you can copy outer HTML, selector, XPath, element, um, or copy the entire element itself. But if we do copy selector, sometimes that actually helps. So here, let's see what it, it thinks. Yeah, cool, awesome. So it just thinks that this good selector for this one is tag six. So in this case, um, probably what I'm gonna do is what I did up here, which is just to add our body selector. Because it looks like we've got all of the other um, CS select, uh, CSS selectors and things um, going there. So we should be able to here. Oh. Oh, that's because that's a semicolon, not a regular colon. I was like, <laughs> it's definitely more specific. Uh, there we go. Cool. All right. So we got rid of our little face here. Um, cool. Let's look at our tag seven. So nice. On this one, this one. Oh, I thought that's what they wanted us to do. Um, I wonder if we do that and take this out. So this little um, uh, greater than symbol also means that the tag actually resides underneath. And so that can add a certain level of specificity to, its, to it as well. Nope. Um, that was weird. Nope, didn't add specificity where I wanted it. So we'll add that body tag back in. Cool. Okay. So here we've got our so our div of wall. Um, We've got the body tag there already. Um, so we've got our parent div, but if we're comparing to our last one that we did, um, it doesn't have the child selector with it um, here, like it does, like it does in this last one. So what I'm going to do here is we can use a different pseudo selector um, called first child. Um, here, so that's what I'm going to try here. So div parent, it's our first child. So what that means basically is that under our parent div, we want to select the first div that exists. Um, so if we go ahead and do that, that didn't work except for the fact that I did not put that in there, but if we do that, that should work. Cool. So when you add a pseudo selector like that, that's always going to add in a little bit of specificity there. And I think that's probably all of the ones that we need to 
um, all of the ones that we need to cover. <laughs>